welcome back to my youtube channel i realize in all of my other videos i have never ever introduced myself i just started talking so hello to those who are new to those who are tuning in to anyone my name is sydney brown i am the owner and the founder of the black girl doula i am a certified doula certified postpartum doula um and yeah welcome to my youtube channel i also have a clothing line the woman for all women clothing line that also kind of backs my doula business but it also um is an expression of woman a woman or women in general supporting other women but anyway let's get straight into this video today i really don't know where this is gonna go i don't know where it's gonna be led but before i press record i just thought about um what i was dealing with yesterday which is i'm on vacation which is nice. So I'm here with family and with my mom, my brother, um, my son and my nephew. So we are at the beach, which is my favorite, favorite place in the world to be. I don't care what beach it is, where it is, if it's sand and water, blue ocean, like the beach is a whole vibe to me and it always has been like, I love, love, love the ocean. But when I got here yesterday, um, if, for those who don't know me, I am a homebody. Um, I need to change my confession. Um, I do love to be at home. Like, um, it's just a sake. It's such a sacred place. I made that space for me so comfortable that that's just where I love to be. Um, I don't know. It's just. It's not. I don't know what it is, but I just love. I love being at home. It's just a safety and being at home. It's just something that I was just strongly connected to. And yesterday, I just arrived at the beach and I was so homesick. I literally had tears in my eyes. Like I just wanted to go home because um, it was such a long day of traveling. Like we woke up at 5 a.m. to catch the train into Boston um just to fly to richmond virginia to drive three more hours to come to nags head north carolina and so it was a long journey and i was exhausted i was exhausted physically mentally i was tired from all of the traveling i was a little like uh um motion sick from the ride from the airplane like i was just tapped and i was like okay i could have stayed at home for all of this like <laughs> And I, and I was looking forward to vacation, but in that still, sorry, I'm a little shaky. Let me make sure that this is steady. Um, but anyway, um, so I kind of went to bed on that note. Um, I journaled a little bit. I read, um, I think that was yesterday. Yesterday was the 21st, right? Yes. So that was yesterday. So yesterday I read the book of Exodus. And I'm um, still in the book of Exodus, but I read chapters 18 and 19. This is right before Moses was receiving um, the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. And it just God showed himself so mightily through through um, the trembling of the mountain and through the, um, the trembling of the mountain and then the thunder. It was just such a scene. He, um, God um, revealed himself through fire to Moses, but he told all of the Israelites to not touch the mountain or they would pass because the presence of God was just so strong. The only um, God uh, permitted Moses, and I believe Aaron too, was permitted to come up to the mountain. And and right before that moment, um, I might have wrote down how Moses' father-in-law um, saw Moses and all the good things that he was doing for the Israelites, but he saw that he was carrying that burden all by himself. Though he had Aaron speaking to the people and Aaron was being used um, through Moses, through God. So God had made Moses like God to Aaron. He had used that analogy, like you are going to be to, to Moses who I am to you. You know what I mean? No, Aaron, he told Aaron, no, sorry. He told Moses that he was to be like God to Aaron. I'm not saying that he was God, but he was going to say that he's going to, whatever God told him, he would tell Aaron and Aaron told the people. So Aaron was almost like the middle man or whatever. And um, so anyway, I read chapter 18 yesterday. I don't even know if I'm going to go into that today. What I really wanted to touch on was um, how I shifted 
my mindset today and how I allowed myself to settle into vacation. Though yesterday was very tough for me. Yesterday was, um, I was wanting to go home so bad. I literally was like, I'm done. I'm ready to go home. Like, I don't want, the vacation hadn't even started yet. And I was just like, I'm done um, being here. And this morning, I kind of shifted my mindset. I woke up, um, got my son ready, got him in the tub, um, cleaned his sheets, and I got in the shower, got me a cup of coffee, and I sat on the balcony right outside of my um, my room. And um, I just, I turned on a sermon from Dr. Darius Daniels. Man, that man is so powerful. But anyway, he was just speaking about um, the favor factor. But after that, after that whole sermon, um, he was just saying, like, he shared, shared a portion of it. And he said, the blessing is on you, not the thing. So it's not the place. It's not the person. It's not whatever that you're seeking as an outside the blessing is you. That's why you said you're blessed coming in, blessed coming out, blessed in the city, blessed in the field, because you are the blessing. Whether you are there, here, it doesn't matter where you are, you are the blessing. The blessing is on you. And that was just so powerful. But then um, after I listened to that sermon, I decided to, uh, I like to what I call water the sea. Sometimes I do that by worshiping right after. I do that by worshiping. Um, right after I hear a sermon to let it marinate to let that thing be watered to let that thing be saturated um, with God's presence so that it can penetrate my spirit I don't want it just to just the seed to fall on just the surface sorry I keep shaking the camera keeps shaking I don't want it to just fall on the surface I want it to be saturated I want it to be watered I want it to be dug deep and as I was worshiping this morning, because I had such a tough time back um, in July, from July till about October for a long time, I was very depressed. I was anxious. And that was my reflection when I was in worship this morning. And I listened to the song now. It's called My Worship. And it's on repeat because that song took me in. Because in one of the parts it says, I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As long as I am breathing, I will worship you, basically. And that song just sent me in because I just began to reflect on how God doesn't allow you to stay where you are. When you lay at his feet. When you go into his presence, when you run back to him after all the troubles, after running away from him for years, after whatever it is, after hiding from him, whatever you decided to do after walking away from the faith, whatever you did to try to hide yourself from God. And when you run back to him, how he's just one, he's welcoming, but he begins to put you back together. And I just begin to reflect on that. And man. I, I was stuck for a minute. Like, I just couldn't stop worshiping. I was I was almost like about to run around his room because I just thought about how good and how he didn't just leave me. He did not just leave me stuck in that, that brokenness. That brokenness. Like, I was so, so terribly broken. And the brokenness on the inside of me was beginning to show itself on the outside of me. I mean, to the point of mad desperation I could not handle how broken I was and I was in this cycle right I was in this cycle for years of praying to God but it was such a, a prayer of desperation a prayer of begging God I remember writing in my journal this is a new journal this is my new journal but I was reflecting on my old journal, maybe last year, last year, and all of my prayers sounded the same. I was begging God, begging him, get me out of this mind frame. Lord, please just deliver me from this. Please, God, just please, please, Lord. I'm just so stuck in the same, I was so ill in my head, so ill. I just remember always my prayers being begging. 
begging and pleading with God to please let, let me free of this. But I didn't change anything that I wanted him to free me from. Like, I would beg him to take me out of this, this thing, this mindset, this vicious cycle. But I didn't change um, how I worship. I never changed how I approached. God gives us a boldness. He said we can declare a thing in his name and it is so. I didn't know who I was. I was so lost. I was so depressed because I didn't know who the heck... Who, who, who am I? Who am I? And that, and that in itself kept kept me in such a cycle because the enemy didn't want me to know. He wanted me to continue to beg and plead with God when I didn't have to do that. I am an heir. <laughs> you don't have to beg for what's rightfully yours. You don't have to beg for what's rightfully yours. And I was at at his feet begging begging for him but running at the same time like I don't want what you have but I'm begging you to let me free of this this turmoil set me free from this turmoil but I don't want nothing to do with you I don't want anything to do with your heart I just want you to set me free from where I am I gotta listen to this part y'all I'm gonna rewind it for a second, I'm sorry. Cause I want y'all to hear. This is the part that I just, huh. I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As long had to get into that part because that part that's the part that literally t took me in because I was just thinking and reflecting like I will never be silent because when you open my eyes to see even just a glimpse of who I truly am and that I'm joint heirs with Christ like the same inheritance that Christ received I can receive that same inheritance like who am I to be begging my father who am I to be begging my father, my creator, someone who created me like him, who spoke things into existence, that spoke things that weren't into a void earth and created so much life from what he spoke? Who am I to shrink myself? Who am I to beg this God? This God that I said that I served. Like who, man, when I got that revelation of who I am, and sometimes I have to remind myself, you have to remind yourself, because it's a daily thing, you have to remind yourself, right? That I am a child of God. I am joint heirs with Christ. I have the same inheritance as Christ. God made me like him so that I can speak things into existence. I can speak things over my life. I can say, let there be. I can declare things into my life into my mind. I can cast out um, the enemy in my mind. But the enemy had me thinking that I couldn't. He had me thinking I was powerless. So powerless to the point that I shrunk myself down, all the way down to where I was a beggar. Literally a beggar. And I was so stuck in that cycle. I remember, like I said, I was looking back through my journal and every day, every day was the same type of prayer. Like, I, I don't know what to do. God, please, if you will just allow me to be free. And I'm not saying I don't want my words to sound like it's not okay to plead with God or because that's where I was. And there's nothing, I'm not going to say there's anything wrong with that. But once you begin to know and God shows you who you truly are, he will show you that you don't have to beg him. 
because God freely gives. <laughs> God freely gives. That's the thing. He freely gave his son so that we don't have to suffer. We don't have to suffer. We, don't, we can have life more abundantly. And when you're in that abundant life, you're not begging God. You're not pleading with God. You're like, God, I know this is what you say in your word. So I believe what you have already written. I believe what you spoke. I believe what you were saying that is mine. Because you said it. Because you said it. And I'm going to say it right back to you. Lord, you said in your word this, that, and the third. Lord, you said this in your word that this. Lord, you said in your word that. So you begin to speak his words back to him. You're not begging. You'll, you'll begin to come out of the beggar mindset. That's what I'm saying. I don't want... You'll begin to come out of the beggar's mindset and realize the kingdom of God is our inheritance. It's something that he promised us. 